Hey, it's Ann Carden, and I want to welcome you back to my channel this week as we dive into proposals. Now, I'm not talking about the kind where you get down on one knee and you ask someone to marry you. However, I will say business proposals can kind of seem like that. You know, you engage with the prospect and then you kind of have to nurture them and build that relationship until they get to a place where they want to buy and now they want a proposal. But let's talk about proposals because do you like them? Do you like doing them in your business? Do you find them daunting and time consuming? Do you feel like you have to chase prospects to get them to sign with you? All of these things are not a good use of your time. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, I was moderating a clubhouse room and there was a little marketer in there who was doing Instagram marketing. And she said, Ann, I am so tired of proposals. She said, I write them and I email them. And she said, I get people that come back to me and say, oh, they can't afford my services. So I said, okay, well, what are you selling? And she said, I sell Instagram marketing and I don't remember all the details, but it was real clear what she was selling. And I said, great, what are you selling that for? And she said, $3,500. And I said, why in the world would you ever send a proposal for $3,500? I mean, I sell high, high ticket offers and I've never, ever written a proposal for my coaching business and consulting business in 10 years. And I teach my clients how to not write them either. Now, I know how to write them. I just don't have to write them. Okay. And it's because of the way I have my offers structured. It's very clear for people to see what they're buying. All right. And that's the key. If people can clearly see what they're buying from you, you don't have to write a proposal. Now you may want to outline, I'll talk more about that, Well, you know, but that's not going to be the same thing. Most often people are sending proposals to close the deal and that is the wrong reason to do a proposal. A proposal is, should be sent to outline the work that you're going to do together if you need that at all. All right, and I, again, I'll, I'm going to talk more about that. but. Do you even need to send a proposal? If you don't have a clearly defined offer that you can easily articulate and communicate to the client that this is what you're getting when you buy, then you're going to have to do a proposal. So I recommend that you get clear on your offer. You get clear on your message. You, you're able to clearly communicate what they are buying so that it almost feels tangible to them. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm going to give you mine, okay? I'm going to give you my message and my offer. So I help coaches, consultants, and professional service providers who are excellent at what they do and they're wanting to scale the seven figures. I help them land higher value clients for three to 20 times more than what they're currently charging so that they can actually scale up their business working with less clients. It simplifies their business and we can put in place a rinse and repeat process that now they can go out and as they're scaling, they can build a small team or they can automate, but they will be able to scale to seven figures working less. Okay, that's a pretty defined offer, right? I help you land clients for three to 20 times more. I help you simplify your business so you can scale it to seven figures working less. That's the gist of what I help you do. Now, you could come back to me at that point and say, that sounds great. Tell me more about that. How do you do that? And I would say, sure, I have a four-step process. The first thing we look at are your offers. How are they structured? How are they packaged up? Are they something that your client wants? Are they high value? The second thing we do is we dial in all of your marketing. We get you positioned as the expert in the market. We get a strategy in place so you can go get in front of your ideal clients with the right message and get them coming to you, attracting uh, those people to you to book on your calendar. And then we dial in a sales process so you can easily close those clients often in one conversation. And then once we get those three main pieces in place, your offer, your marketing, and your sales process, you've got a rinse and repeat system that now we can continue to grow your business and scale it. And we can do some automation. We can help you build a team, all of those things to take it to those higher levels. Okay, that look how simple that was. I didn't go into a lot of detail of what each step includes. I didn't do that. I just said, we're going to work on your offers. We're going to work on your marketing. We're going to work on your sales. And then we're going to help scale you so that you get more time and freedom. Okay. Easy. So you can either say yes or no to that. 
And then you can you might say, okay, great. How does that work? How long does it take? And how much is it? Those are much easier pointed questions to answer than sitting there writing a proposal for someone. Because I don't see the point to write a proposal. I just told you what we're gonna do. You don't need to know all the details, okay? Because quite honestly, they might be a little bit different for you than someone else. And so I don't really know until I start working with you. But those are the four steps I'm gonna take you through and I'm gonna help you with each one of those steps, make sure we dial in the right things. Okay, so still, no proposal. See, often when you write proposals and you put too much detail in them, you pigeonhole yourself. I don't wanna do that. I wanna be able to shift a little bit with the client if I need to. How about you? Are you doing this? So if you say, hey, I can build a seven-figure funnel for you, okay, they don't need to know all the ins and outs of that. They don't need to know every detail and every little thing and we're gonna do this in click funnels and we're going you don't need to go into all that. They don't really care. They don't care how you do it. Just build the darn funnel for me, right? And it's the same thing with my offer. People don't really care. I mean, they wanna know what it like what they're getting and how it works, but they don't care about all the ins and outs and the details. And so that's what you have to realize. So do you even need to send a proposal or could you package up your offers in a better way and articulate and communicate those offers better so that people could clearly understand what they're buying? Because if they clearly understand what they're buying, you can eliminate the proposal process altogether. So that's step number one. Do you even need to send them at all, okay? The second thing is when you are in a situation where maybe there are a lot of deliverables or there are a lot of things that you're going to have to you know frame out for people in a proposal then the one thing you want to do is you want to get a yes from that client or that prospect i should say before you ever write the proposal so the proposal doesn't isn't the closing the proposal is the signing okay and what i mean by that is you uncover everything that that client wants and needs in your conversation with them in your initial conversation with them and then if they say send a proposal you say what would you like in that proposal making sure that you've got everything in that proposal that they want and then you want to say great i'm happy to do that so if we when we get back together and go over that proposal um, am I to assume then that you, you're interested in working with me? Okay, so you get a yes. You get the yes before you ever write the proposal. If they say, well, I, you know, I got to think about it, you don't have a qualified buyer. So why would you spend hours putting together a proposal, which I don't recommend anyway, and I'll talk about that. But why would you spend hours putting together a proposal when they're not even sold? So get them sold first then the proposal becomes a formality of just sort of making you know making the numbers work or figuring out the details and i'll and, and i'll share with you what i mean by that okay so get the yes the other thing to do is i want to say get two yeses before you write the proposal so the first yes is yes they're interested in working with you okay great it's worth me writing the proposal the second yes you want is okay we're going to set up another time two days from now and this is key uh, time kills deals, so don't let too much time pass. It should be in a day or two. Let's go ahead and set up another call for two days from now. I'll put the proposal together. You may want to give them a couple options. That's up to you how you do that. And you say, we're going to go through it together, and that way I'll be able to answer any questions. We'll be able to talk through anything. And am I to assume that if we can uh, come to an agreement and make the numbers work that you're ready to move forward on that call? That's your second yes. Okay, first yes is you want to work with me before you write the proposal. Second yes is you're ready to move forward when we get back on the call and we walk through that proposal. If you don't have two yeses, you don't have a qualified buyer. Understand that, okay? Now, they may say something, well, I would have to talk it over with, you know, so-and-so in my company or whatever. Then I would say, would it be possible for them to be on the call too so we can all walk through it together? I find that that works best. Okay, so ask for the, all the decision makers to be on that call. So that's how you get around that. Okay, now your proposal becomes an outline of what you talked about and they said they wanted in the proposal. So you want to make sure you hit on those points. It also becomes um, the details 
of what they're actually buying, right? And everything that they said they wanted, nothing more, keep it simple, okay? And then here's what the cost or the investment is going to be. And then it has a place for them to sign. That's it. It can be three or four pages. It shouldn't, I mean, depending, I guess, on how much they're getting, but it should be very streamlined. The first page is the conversation that you talked about. The second page is an outline of everything that they said they wanted and here's how you help. And then that third page can be the contract or the agreement. Super simple. You don't have to spend hours and hours and hours on it and you can keep the process streamlined. Also, when you get back on the phone with them, now they're ready to move forward. You already know that. Make the numbers work. Even if you have to take a couple things off to make the numbers work, that's where the negotiation process happens to actually close the deal. But you've already closed the deal, all right? It's just a matter of now let's make it work. So that's a very different place to be than to email a proposal, chase them down, let them go out and price shop with that proposal. So you don't wanna put yourself in that position at all. You wanna have total control with that whole process start to finish, all right? And you wanna make sure that you're getting everything that they want in that proposal. So why would they say no? If they're serious buyers, you should be able to make it work. The other thing is you do want to make sure that you find out what is their budget or what are they thinking in their head they want to spend on this because that will give you a good idea whether they're even in the ballpark or not, whether they're even in the right headspace to invest in your services. So, you know, if they're thinking 10,000 and you know you can't do it for less than 50, then you have an opportunity right there to walk away before you ever create a proposal. Or you can say, well, I get what you're saying, but I have to tell you 50,000 would be on the low end that you would be able to get all of this done. You can just say that right there. And I don't know exactly what it's gonna cost until I map it all out, but I will tell you it's gonna be at least $50,000. Is that out of your budget? And if they say yes, and you know that you don't want to do it for less than that or that you can't do it for less than that, then you have just saved yourself a whole lot of time. All right, so don't ever email proposals. Make sure you control the conversation all the way through. All right, get two yeses before you write the proposal. Do you even need to send a proposal at all? Okay, if you dial things in better and in your offers and get clear in your offer in the outcome or the result that you provide your clients, you probably can get away from them altogether. So I hope this has been helpful. Listen, I would love to hear your feedback, your comments. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, give me a reply here and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if I can help you in your business, multiply your money and simplify your business to get time and freedom back into your life while you scale the seven figures or more, then please book a call with me. You can go to acardon.com and book on my calendar and let's have a conversation about how we can scale your business with simplicity and ultra high value clients. All right, you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.